Welcome to RoboSquid TV. I'm Kyle, and together we're going to make beautiful websites. Welcome back if you've been following from our web school playlist, and welcome new devs. In our last video, we took a look at what CSS is and how it works to style our content. But that's the very basics. Today we are going to get into the meat of it, and we're going to learn the most important fundamental concepts of CSS. The CSS box model. We've talked about how every HTML element we create appears to always just stack on top of each other. We've also mentioned how every element is essentially a box with a different name for semantic purposes. But all HTML elements are essentially just boxes. Every HTML element starts as a generic rectangular box before CSS modifies its properties. Before we get to these properties, let's get back into the whole stacking on top of each other thing. All elements possess a display property, and your web browser has been automatically assigning each element a default value without your knowing. Many of the elements we have seen so far have the block value display, which means that the element will be rendered on a new line and you can specify a width and height. The default value for all elements is inline, which means that the element will only occupy as much space as it needs, and other inline elements are free to sit alongside it on the same line. All text is inline. When you type, it continues on the same line until you wrap your text in a paragraph tab, which your browser will render as a block. There is also an inline block, which is like an inline element, but with the ability to set a height and width on your inline element. Now I said the default display property is inline, but there aren't too many inline elements. Pretty much everything we've seen stacks on top of each other, which means they're blocks. While your web browser is actually loading a default style sheet on every website you visit, which overwrites the default value, making most elements blocks. Take a look in the description. I'll link to the style sheet that WebKit uses, which is the engine used by Chrome. All right, now we understand we can control the flow of the page. In fact, if you think about it, we just figured out how to make columns for a website. We could take a block element like main and insert two section or div elements and set their display to inline block and give them a background color so we can see them and then just give them a width of 50%. That right there is a two column layout. Better than that, it's responsive. Because we used 50% as our width, on any size screen, those two columns will take up half of the width of the screen. But before you get into all that, it's important to understand the CSS box model. Okay, we're back. So these invisible boxes, we can see them if we give them a background color like we did in our demonstration, but that's not the whole picture, there's more. The box model explains the sizing of our elements based on a few CSS properties of our box. This box is actually made of a few layers, the content area, padding, border, and margin. Take a look at this mock-up blog website. We just have a main element on the page with a 50% width and margin set to auto. Okay, uh, quick side note here. Setting the margin to auto on any block element is a really cool trick to center the element horizontally. The element will take up the width you set and then the remaining space will be split into the left and right margin for the element. Okay, so we also gave our main a background color of light gray just so that we can see it. Let's add a paragraph and pretend that it's a blog post. When you look at the page, notice how the text is right up alongside the edge. This isn't really what we want. If we apply a padding to our paragraph, the text will be pushed away from the sides. Now, what's the difference between margin and padding? Padding is considered inside of our element, while margin is considered outside of the element. When we apply a background color to our paragraph, we see that the color extends all the way up to the edge of the main. If we replace that padding with a margin, you can see that the whole element has been moved over. On top of that, margin will auto collapse. What I mean is when you have two elements on top of each other with let's say a padding of 50 pixels, that means that there will be 100 pixels between the two elements because each has an internal padding of 50 pixels. If we use margin instead, margin won't double up. The top margin from the element on the bottom will disappear and make the total margin between the two elements 50 pixels. Check out this codepen.io example I made for you guys, it's pretty cool. You can move these sliders and see how margin and padding affects the elements. This is more helpful if you open up the Chrome DevTools and inspect the elements so you can highlight the padding and margin areas. If you haven't seen DevTools yet, we're going to get into that in a video really soon. But to see what I'm talking about, right click one of the demo content boxes inside the Chrome web browser and click inspect in the context menu. In the window that opens, you'll see the HTML being rendered on the page in the left side under the elements tab. The element you right click should be the one that's selected, but you can select any element from here by clicking on it. 
In the right side of the window, you will see under the Style tab, you can see all of the CSS properties applied to the element and even change them. But at the bottom is what we want to look at. At the bottom, we see a representation of the box model for this element. We can see the size of each layer and even highlight them to see the area outlined on the page. If your sliders are set to zero, you'll see that if you hover over the content area of the inspector, you'll see that in the first demo content box turns blue. If you increase the padding, you can see the value change in the inspector. Now you can hover over the padding and it will become highlighted on the page. And the same goes for margin. Notice when we add a margin, it's only applying one margin width between the elements. Play around with the sliders and take note of the changes and get familiar with the properties. Now, by default, when you set the width of your element, the width is applied to the content area. Any padding, border, and margin is applied outside of the content box. So let's say that we have a div element and we want it to be 500 pixels wide with a 5 pixel border and a 5 pixel padding. Well, if we set our width to 500 pixels, the total width of the element will actually be 520 pixels wide. And so, because I care about your education, I have another CodePen.io example for you. The CSS Box Model Playground. A little more comprehensive than the last one, here you can use the sliders to affect any of the properties of the box model, and I would recommend again using the Chrome DevTools in combination with this exercise to see the highlighted changes. You will also notice a checkbox labeled Border-Box. Remember when we wanted to make that two column layout earlier? Well, if we set the width to 50%, what would happen if we added padding? Well, then we would have a total width of over 100% and it wouldn't look right. Q, box sizing. The hero of CSS, a box sizing border box. The box sizing property will modify the box model and move the padding and border inside of our content box, making sure the width you set is the width you get. There's no math to figure out. Honestly, border box is almost always the way to go, at least in my opinion. Uh, your needs may be different. What we generally do is add a CSS declaration at the top of our CSS file to apply border box to everything. The asterisk symbol is used to select every single element on the page. You'll see a comma next to that, which allows us to target multiple selectors with the same declaration, so we are also applying this rule to two pseudo classes, which are advanced CSS selectors we will be covering in another video soon. Don't worry if that last part didn't make sense to you yet, just know that these selectors will allow you to apply the declaration to every element on the page. With this, we can work with our page using our new box sizing of border box, and these things will just make more sense and behave the way you expect them to. If you play with the CSS box model playground in CodePen, you can see the effects of toggling border box using the checkbox. Add a border to the boxes and then toggle the border box. You can see the border move inside of the boxes. Setting border box to the whole page is what we do because we don't like the default CSS styling given to us by the web browser. And so we wish to reset these settings with our own code at the beginning of our CSS. In fact, another thing I like to reset is the padding and margin on the HTML and body tags, because for some reason, the body tag has a margin on it by default, meaning that by default, your page won't stretch to the edge of the screen. So our next video will be talking about what a CSS reset is and what you might want in yours. I hope this was really informative for you guys. I hope you learned a lot. If you did, please show some appreciation to the like button and share this video. If you want to see more, subscribe. And don't forget, we have a Facebook and Twitter so you can see all the content that doesn't make it into the videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.